That's the collapsible portion right there. That's the safety piece. So you could almost keep. No, you don't want, you don't want the rag joint anymore, though. Right. It makes a mushy feel. So there we go. No one likes to feel mushy. I hate being mushy. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we're working back on the 52 Chevy right here. This time we're going to be working on the steering components. I have a 32 inch chrome I did it steering column that's going to be going in the truck. But before we get to that, I'm going to wrap the entire thing with painter's tape, just like we did the rear bumper, because we do not want to scratch that, because that will be the final mock up of the steering column in the truck. We don't want to scratch it, putting it in and out, getting it fitted correctly. So Dave's coming over to help. So I'm going to wrap the steering column while we're waiting for Dave to show up. And as soon as he gets here, we're going to get working on the truck. So let's get to it. So today we're going to be using the green flavor of the painter's tape by Frog Tape, just what I found up cheaper at the box store. And here we have the I did it steering column. So I'm going to pull this out of the box right now, get it wrapped in painter's tape. Um, with the steering column, I got the floor mount kit for it, so it mounts going through the firewall. A bunch of other uh, steering, you know, signal light linkages and whatnot. And here is the steering column in its chrome glory, as you can see here. So we're going to wrap this entire thing with painter's tape. We do not want this getting scratched up, putting it in. So there we go. The column is completely wrapped in green painter's tape. This harness is what controls your signal lights and stuff right here. I've got the correct joints for the bottom here, the 36 spline, I believe, to go to the steering shaft. The steering wheel will get mounted on this end. I haven't purchased a steering wheel yet, so that'll be coming up soon. So now, let's get out to the garage. So the steering column is gonna be poking through, I don't know, right up in this area here. It's gonna hopefully be a straight shot uh, you can kind of see it right down there. Um, so what we're going to do is we have to take that, what is it, the intermediate shaft off? Yeah. Uh, trying to get into it from here. Oh, there it is. See, Dave's got his hands on it right there. It's a plastic cover over it. So we're trying to get that cover off, and then there should be a bolt holding that intermediate shaft on. Going to get rid of that out of there. This is in the way. All right, so we got the cover moved out of the way right now. You can see this revealed this gooey ass mess in here. So we need to find the bolt. Oh, here it is, right there, I think. Yeah, it's just one bolt, and it most likely is a 10. And of course, I think it's going the other way. Uh, of course. There's no nut on it. I believe it's just a. I think the bolt's popping through this side. So we have to turn the wheel. Yes, yeah, so I think this is the end of the bolt right here, right there. So we need to rotate this around, get to the other side of that. We need to spin the wheels. We don't really want to have to lift the truck up, so we're just gonna pop these tie rods off real quick. Like that. Got the, the tie rods sure. off on both sides. So we should be able to spin that steering box to get that into position where we need it to get, get, get. We spun the, the steering box around a little bit, and here you can see right there the bolt we need to loosen, so this will slide off right here. This this piece needs to go away. This is the original steering column. It's gonna go away. And right there is where we're gonna bolt on our new joint to the gearbox right here. Oh no, no, no. Not again. <laughs> oh, That's 11 millimeter. I hope we did my panties. <laughs> Was it 11? It's an 11. So this should slide right off after this, then we can drop it back down. We're hoping that it's a straight shot. Okay. I'm getting 
guessing that should just pop right off, right? Yeah, it just pulls out. Get the old Tanya Harding in here. It's coming, so I think we need to pull from the top now. So we got this off. There's the 11 millimeter bolt holding that shaft in. Right there. Okay. Now it's gone. There we go. All right, so here we have the shaft. It's the rag joint, all covered in goop, which is bad. Nasty. Now that's out. That's the collapsible portion right there. That's the safety piece. So you could almost keep. No, you don't want. You don't want the rag joint anymore, though. Right. It makes a mushy feel. All right. All righty. Now so, we might want to put that joint in there. Let um, me grab the it. one that's supposed to be for it anyway. This is the box over here that we're going to be putting in eventually with the better turning radius or steering, whatnot. So this should fit on here. See, it's kind of. Has a little bit of play. I have a feeling once this tightens up, it'll be fine. Where'd you get that from? eBay. Straight from China. Don't sniff the uh, air pockets. Free air COVID bags. with purchase. Free COVID with purchase. <laughs> so we need to figure, is there a flat spot on that shaft? Um, I do not see a flat spot on that shaft at all. Is it right here? Yeah, right here. So this flat spot here will go something like this like that oh, good so right here we have a wooden dowel we're gonna use this wooden dowel to mock up the actual steering shaft here from here it's gonna go hopefully a straight shot using this wooden dowel into the gearbox if we can't do that we have this other double D joint and then this heim joint here so we can actually have a little slight bend into the steering but I'm hoping that's gonna be a straight shot so you look at the other end of this Called a double G joint here because you can see the flat spots. And so I need to sand both ends of that dowel right now. Take the grinder here and flatten the spot out on here. We got both ends sand flat. Now it should fit into that joint just fine. These need to come out to make room for that to go in. That'll help. Like that. Now this should slide in here. Just like that. Give us a rough idea of, where, of how that's gonna go in there like that. So then this turns just like that. All right, so here's this. This is the side I did, obviously. Yeah, you're good there. Oh. No? So close. And we're gonna bring you over there so you can see what Dave's looking at. Okay, so the problem is, here's the gearbox. Right down yonder there. That's where the joint is. And then this is a straight shot with a wooden dowel. Straight up to where the steering column's gonna be coming out right there in that big hole. The problem is we're hitting the manifold right here. So we do need to put a hind joint in. So we're close, but Unless I move the steering wheel over about an inch, which would just be weird. So we're going to have to figure out a Heim joint or something. The shock tower I put in is right down there. You can kind of see it shining in the light there. We might be able to come off of that shock tower right there where Dave's pointing at. Have it come up here and put a Heim joint in right here so the steering shaft will go this way a little bit over here and then angle back towards the actual column over there. So it's going to have a slight angle and bend to it. That's what we're working on right now. All right, so the goal is I'm gonna cut a three inch strip off of here. This is gonna wrap around the steering column. I'm gonna put a couple bolts in and it's gonna tighten up around the steering column. So we're gonna use my uh, metal shears to do that. Now we're gonna have to figure out 
And then here's where it'll clamp together, right? Yeah. And it won't go anywhere. Yeah. You can put a bolt here and a bolt here. We should bend these and then... Make them flat. Yeah. And if we mark here, or here, and then here on the other side, then we can use that and just... Like this. And then bend this up right here. Mm -hmm. Use the brake and bend that up at a 90. And we'll rotate it back around and readjust the bend to how we want it. So heavy. So we bent this piece of metal just like this. This is going to wrap around the pipe. And we should be able to put a nut on one side and a bolt on the other to tighten it right up. And this sleeve will get welded into place in the floor of the truck. I think we didn't need to have that quite so 90. Did I measure wrong? I feel like I measured wrong. I don't know. No. It doesn't need to be twisting more. Like that. There. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> the curve looks pretty good. Maybe yep. tap it a little bit. So we'll chop it off at an inch. We'll use the shear, and I think the shear will fit into one no. inch better than. So we built this sleeve right here that fits around it, and we're gonna put two bolts through here, two three inch bolts, and this will actually clamp around the steering column and hold it nice and tightly in place. Then this sleeve we just made is actually going to weld into the floor of the truck to hold the column in place. So right now we're just going to cut off the access on both sides that we don't need. So now we got to drill it. Put two bolts through that thing. So I've got this cut right here, or um, marked where we're going to cut this. This is going to poke through the firewall at a downward angle like this. Actually, like this. So this won't be poking through the firewall. This section you'll see out inside the engine compartment. We'll end up welding this around the outside and welding this right into place to hold that steering column right in place so it doesn't go anywhere. Then this bottom section right here will clamp together like this, pinching the steering column into place where we want it. It's gonna come out really good. Looks good so far. I love the smell of burning metal in the morning. My listeners need more of it, Dave. Yeah. They're like, we need more of Dave. <laughs> no, they aren't saying that. Every one of them is like, where's Dave? We need more Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Man down. <laughs> Dave is down. <laughs> Dave is down. <laughs> I'm falling and I can't get up. <laughs> How the hell did I re what did I trip said over? He says a lot of stupid shit on <laughs> the videos. Boom. All right, let's try this again. Dave, stay upright. Yeah, I should probably show you what I'm doing here. Absolutely, absolutely, right there. Oh, yeah, that's what we're going for. Something like that. Might need some loving. Might be too tight right now, actually. Nope. No. We need longer bolts. All right. That's holding that. All right. I don't think you're straight up and down though. I can, I can't, I can't see it, but I'm feeling it. Yeah, right there. 
It's a good thing I pulled it back too because the floor is going to get in the way of those nuts, the back nut. Oh, all right. How much is sticking out on your end? Maybe a quarter of an inch. It just, uh, if it's suspended, just come on out and look at it. Yeah. I clamped it in place. So right now we've got the, the steering column kind of set in place using a clamp. Um, that will angle down just a little bit because it is going through the floor down below. And that's not 100% in the right place. But that sleeve we made is going to weld into the floor down there. And then the column is going to clamp into place up here with a rubber gasket just to protect some of the dampening of it. But that's pretty much where it's going to sit right now. So right now we have this thing right here where the steering column pokes out the little bracket we made. I've got it all bent back into shape. There was a little bit of, little bit of wonkiness going on to it. So I've got that all straightened out right now. So I'm going to take the half inch belt sander. I'm just going to clean up all around this edge right here in preparation. So when I do pull this column up in here, I can just tack this right around in here. That'll be our bracket holding the steering column to the firewall. And on the inside, we're going to do a bead around here once we pull the steering column out, because I don't want the steering column in there when we're actually laying down a full bead with the welder. We're just going to tack it in place to hold it where we want it. So I'm going to clean up outside around in here. I'm going to clean up on the inside with the half inch belt sander. And then we're going to get to tacking that in place. Hit that with a little bit of acetone. That's nice and clean now for welding. Right around here. So now we're gonna head inside the cab right now and clean up the inside, get this tacked in place. We're just cleaning up the firewall a little bit, getting off all this old gunky sound deadening material the best we can around where we're gonna be welding in here. somehow and I'll actually try to position myself in a way to not be in the way of the camera and use this little half inch belt sander to basically go around in here and clean that up. It's pretty clean. I'm just going to continue cleaning up here a little bit because I'm going to do a little wedge piece up here just to support the column even more at the firewall. So far so good. Clean it up nice. We'll wipe everything down with some acetone just to make sure it's extra clean for welding. Throw some tacks in, pull the column out, finish welding it in place. Whew, it's hot. So I've got some of the wonderful dollar store nail polish remover, 100% acetone. Put some on a little rag here. Saturate it pretty good. And it's gonna start wiping everything down. Making sure everything's nice and clean for welding. Everything's been wiped down nice and neat. So we're gonna get the welder ready right now. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm just gonna hold this with one hand, lift this up like this. Just throw a tack right in the center here, a tack here on the bottom left corner, and a tack on the bottom right corner. So there's the steering column right now, you can see. So what I'm doing is I'm going to pull this up, hold it right here, throw a tack right in the center. Just like that. Throw one in on this side. And one in on this side. So now let's go back on the inside of the truck, do the exact same three tacks, get the steering column taken out, and then we'll fully weld that in place. All right, so I'm going to use this angle finder right here to figure out what angle I need up here to put a bracket in. That's what it's going to look like. I'm going to make a little wedge to fit in there to add as an extra bracket for the steering column adapter in the firewall. So I've got this scrap piece of 11 gauge metal here. So I'm basically just gonna take my little uh, wedge here, my little angle finder, 
and replicate this down onto the piece of metal here so we know exactly the angle we need. So now we're gonna clamp this to the welding table just like this. Use a jigsaw to cut that corner off. So there's the piece. We'll just hit this with the flap wheel to clean up all the edges. Um, nice and clean. Then we'll tack weld this into place on the inside. I don't know if I'm gonna block your view from this, but I gotta get in here to get this tacked in. I don't know the best angle of the dangle here to do this. Let's try the other side first, see what happens. So I think it's all tacked in place right now. We're gonna loosen these two bolts up, get the steering column taken out, and then we'll finish welding everything the best we can. So now we're gonna undo the clamp right here, and hopefully the column pulls out nice and easy. Just twisting it. There we go. Whew. Right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish weld our little adapter right here in place on both sides. We're not going all the way around because we need the bottom to open and close like this. So we're just finish welding the top of this section here, this side and this side. Uh, we'll see how that comes out right now. It's a little awkward of positioning to reach in here, but we'll make do. We always do. All right, so I'm gonna have you guys wait out here and watch from outside while I'm welding. We're gonna weld that little bracket in on the inside right in here. It's just too hard to position the camera in there with the light laying in there, trying to position everything correctly. So you will see the stuff from out here maybe. If not, I'll just cut this part of the video out um, and I'll show you the end result. So I'm gonna let this run for now and see what happens. This bracket here has been welded to the firewall. This stuff up here will all get smoothed out. This will all get smoothed out once we smooth the firewall over. But everything's in position. The bracket going through the firewall is completely welded into place. We have one of the joints on down there. So we need to make the shaft that goes from the steering gearbox right here up to this pivot point and then pivot back over to the steering because we need to go around the manifold here. If not, a straight shot just hits the manifold right about here. I really don't want to divot the manifold or have to like do anything with the shaft. So we're going to just have it pivot this way and then pivot right back down to the steering box. We've got the steering shaft completely bolted up into place. Up here, I used a two and a half inch muffler clamp. I don't like that at all. I'm going to figure out a better way to actually bolt this up here to the dash. And then down here, um, the clamp is completely welded into place and bolted into place now with the support on the top of it up there. And everything came out really good. Those welds will get cleaned up. So that'll look a lot nicer once it's all done. So over here, we actually have the steering shaft right here. We're going to cut this to the proper length that we need. For the pivot point, we're going to use one of these. I believe they're called heim joints. This steering shaft will go through here and it can actually pivot in different positions like this to allow it to actually change in the direction it's moving. So this is gonna get welded into the end of the column here and then this will get welded. I'll cut it to the proper length. This will get standing vertically. So it'll be like this inside and this will get welded to the frame. We'll position it to the right height. We have some adjustability with threads in the nuts here. Um, we've got some of these. Uh, I believe this is a three quarter inch uh, shaft. So this on both sides will come in from the gearbox here, through here, into here. And this will change position from here to here. And this goes to the actual steering column. So we're gonna have like a little jog in the steering right here. Just a little cheat cheat right around the manifold. So what we're trying to work on now is connecting the steering gearbox to the actual steering shaft from the steering column right here. Problem is the manifold right here is actually in the way. So I need to jog the steering shaft out away from the manifold, just enough to clear this. Doesn't need to be too far away, just enough to clear that and then make it back to here. So we're gonna put a hind joint in right around this location here, which will weld directly to the top of the frame on a one by one piece of steel. I'm gonna use a wooden dowel right now just to kind of mock this up into what we think. So I'm gonna use a tape measure, measure how far I believe the hind joint's gonna be. And then we'll go to here and then we'll go here to here. So I think we'll be in good shape. Shouldn't be too difficult, I don't believe. We'll see, everything changes with the wind. So I'm gonna cut the wooden dowel. I'm gonna say about 16 inches maybe. Say 16 inches for the wooden dowel. 
Let's see how that lines up. So I've got this wooden dowel right here. I beveled the edges down just a little bit on the ends to fit into these U joints here. This is the Heim joint right here in the center. So this end's gonna go into the gearbox. We'll hopefully go into the gearbox. If I can, there we go. Just like that. And then this joint's gonna go right here. I believe like this. Should probably make the dowel 17 inches, I'm thinking. Let me try a 17 inch dowel because I think this is just a little bit too short, which is why we're playing with wood. It's a lot cheaper. Okay, I redid this dowel as an 18 inch dowel now. So I can always cut it shorter if I need to. Put this back into place like that. Oh yeah, that's good. Heim joint's gonna go right here. I gotta have to mark that so I know where that's gonna fall. This is gonna go right about here, just like this. And then I need piece that goes from here to here. It's gonna be a really short piece. So let's get the piece put on the steering shaft and measure this and get that put in. And then we'll measure how high we need the heim joint to be. Once that's in place, we'll start mocking stuff up. So right now we're gonna hook on the U joint to the actual steering column. Like that, and now we need to determine the shaft length between point A and point B here, which will be like this. And that's gonna allow us to clear the manifold perfectly fine with the heim joint. Let's say four and a half inches. Got a little four and a half inch dowel here that's gonna go between the steering column and the steering box. It's gonna go in here like this gonna go in here like this. This is exactly what the steering's gonna be like. So that's gonna be absolutely perfect right there. Keep it as much of a straight line as possible. Jog around the manifold the best I can. And this should function perfectly well. All right, I'm gonna show you, I'm bringing in close to show you what we're working with here. We've got the steering shaft right here, comes out of the steering shaft into a U-joint, jogs over to this U-joint here, into the Heim joint, which is taped in place right here, just so it doesn't slide down the shaft. And then that shoots straight down to the actual steering gearbox, which is right down here into that U-joint. We've got it all mocked up with dowels right now, just cause they're super easy to cut and really cheap compared to the actual steering shaft itself. I measured from the bottom of the Heim joint bolt that I have on there now. I don't know if you can get in there and see it. There's a bolt right there. That's gonna screw into a one by one. That's gonna weld straight down to the top of the frame to hold that Heim joint in place. We'll brace it with other supports later once the body's off just so we can get in there easier. But right now, that's where that Heim joint's gonna go into this U-joint, back to the steering columns. There's still a little jog in the steering shaft to get around the actual manifold because we don't want it rubbing. I've seen a bunch of these S10s where the steering shaft was straight and it was literally rubbing right against here and the, the steering shaft had wear marks on it, the manifold had wear marks on it. So this is just gonna prevent any rubbing, no vibrations going through the steering wheel from the engine, which would just be odd. And it should give us enough room for the engine to play a little bit. Just if it moves a little bit, we'll be fine. So right now we're gonna get this heim joint situated and bolted down into place. Once that's done, then we'll worry about mocking up the rest of the actual steel steering shaft onto the heim joint. This nut's gonna get welded to the end of this one by one. The heim joint right here will end up screwing in to this. And that's what's gonna support the heim joint in the truck. So first we're gonna clean up the nut. Then we're gonna clean up the end of this one by one just to get it ready for welding. So let's do it with the, the flap wheel on the grinder. It's a nice brisk 65 degrees out here in sunny Tampa, Florida today. So it's not sweaty out here, which is really nice. The nut is all cleaned up now. The nut screws on to the heim joint like so. And on this, it's welded to the end like that. So I'm gonna clamp this to the welding table. I'll put this here, relatively centered to where I want it. Just push till I get where I want it. I'm just gonna throw a tack in right there. Take everything out, fully weld the nut in place, screw the heim joint back in here, measure from here down seven and a half inches, cut this off here. And then we've got our heim joint bracket that gets welded to the frame on this end, standing up vertically. So that's fully welded, nut on the end of my one by one pipe. We'll clean it up a little bit with the flap wheel. So I just wanna clean this up just a little bit, not too much. Just enough to clean it up now, we'll cut it, and we'll get it welded into the truck. So this came out absolutely perfect. All nicely cleaned up, solid welds all the way around it. Time joint will screw in here. It was really nice in the truck. So we need seven and a half inches from the top of this nut to the bottom of here. We're gonna cut that off at seven and a half inches. This will get welded vertically into the truck. Time joint will be supported right here. Some supports will be coming off of here to hold this better in place. Probably up higher, just for more security. So this is what we have right now. We've got the nut welded in to the one inch square tube right here. Heim joint screws into the end of that. So I need to measure seven and a half inches from the top of the nut we welded in or the bottom of this nut down seven and a half inches cut that off 
then this piece right here will get welded into place on the top of the frame, pointing straight up vertically. Steering shaft will go through here, and the heim joint allows this to actually move. With this extra nut on here, I can actually lock this heim joint in place to keep it from moving. Throw some Loctite on there later, but right now, we just want to really just get stuff mocked up. So right now, I'm going to take the heim joint off. We're going to cut this seven and a half inches, then we're going to mock this back up in the truck, probably with the wood, just to make sure the seven and a half inches is the correct length we need, and then we'll go from there. So we'll throw this on the bandsaw right now, get that cut. This is gonna get welded directly on top of the frame. Heim joint goes in up here, add brackets later. Get this all situated again and tacked in. And make sure this is relatively straight. I can get in here with the welder and right there, just like that. Plenty of clearance everywhere right now. Comes out of the steering box. It's the heim joint right here, which kind of brings it this way, like this. Hits the heim joint, goes into another U-joint, brings it back to the steering column. So we really go around, really just going around this manifold, because straight down, rub against the manifold right around here. So we're giving it plenty of clearance coming around like this. It's actually in a great position right now. The heim joint, uh, bracket we made is nice and vertical um, both ways looks like it's standing up perfectly in place So we're gonna tack it in place right where it is right now So I'm gonna get the welder get the ground strap clamped to something possibly down below and just throw a tack on it right where it is So right now I just fired up the welder and we're gonna tack the heim joint bracket down to the top of the frame right down here Oh, yeah, that stiffened it up a lot once we tear the truck down We'll be able to really get the beans on it, you know so right now, it's nice and vertical. I've got three quarters of an inch between the heim joint and the actual manifold, so if the engine was to rock at all, it's not gonna touch the steering shaft. Dude, that spins nice. Look at that. That's exactly what we want. So we've got everything marked. We know the lengths of these shafts that we need. So we're gonna take it all apart and work on actually replicating these shafts. Hardest part's gonna be getting this section in right here, but we're gonna take it all apart right now. All right, so now that we actually got the steering shaft cut out of wood, we're gonna replicate that out of steel right now and put it back in the truck. Ooh, now it's recording. All right, so we we'll take the, the steel shaft we're gonna be using. It's actually shaped like a D, you can kind of see that. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna trace the exact shape from the wood dowel we used onto here so we know exactly how long we need. So now we know where we're gonna cut it, right there. Do that in the bandsaw. So right now we've got the bar cut to where we need it to be. This side has a little groove taken out of it. You can see right in here. We need to replicate that groove over on this side. So when we do put the, the lock bolt into place, it actually catches this little groove and keeps it from backing out. If it was ever to come loose, it won't pull out of the U-joint. So we're gonna just groove this side, get this installed in the truck. I'm gonna use the grinder edge to put the groove into it. All right, so now both sides of the bar have a notch. I made the other notch a little bit more pronounced so it'll actually catch if it does try to pull out. See them there, you can see it there. So now we're gonna go ahead and bolt this back into the truck right now. So now we're gonna insert the, the steering shaft through the heim joint into the steering gearbox. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to do this. We've got the steering shaft connected to the actual gearbox now. That spins. So now we have to work on this shaft here. There we go. All right. So now I just need to push the steering shaft down and hopefully it stays on this time. We'll put this in to lock everything in place. It looks good on this side. This thing spins beautifully. 
clears everything perfectly. Steering functions just as it should. Nice and tight up here. Everything's not going anywhere. Time joints working perfect. So the great height right where it is. Has a nice downward slope to the gearbox. All right, get you a close up to see what we actually had accomplished. We got the firewall mount for the steering column all welded into place on the firewall. That comes out and goes into a U joint down the shaft. It goes into another U joint right here through a heim joint and then straight down into the gearbox down there. Everything functions and spins just like it should. We had to get around the manifold. I didn't want the steering to rub on the manifold and with the S10 conversions, if I just went straight from here down to the gearbox down there, the steering shaft would have been rubbing against the manifold. Could I have notched the manifold? Probably. But this way we've got plenty of room now. If you look from the steering column all the way down to the gearbox, nothing's gonna hit. The engine has room to shift around and move if it has to, if it rocks back and forth. So everything fits absolutely perfect right now and functions just as it should. The steering has now been 100% completely mocked up. All right, everyone, that's gonna be wrap for this video. As you can see, we got the steering 100% completely mocked up in the 52 Chevy here. We were able to bypass going around the manifold so we have no rubbing, nothing's wrong, everything functions as it should. We're just getting closer and closer to pulling this motor out for a full rebuild. So next up, we have to work on the electric parking brake and the air tanks and compressor mock-up. So as always, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Smash that notification icon down below so new future videos do come out. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.